Life before the Tulsa Bustle was rough. I was given to my grandma at the age of two. Um, and well, my grandma was, is not a very nice lady. Um, my grandmother was abusive. It wasn't safe. It wasn't a home. It wasn't what I needed nor deserved. Never really found my place. Picked on, bullied, and only thing I could do was walk off or fight or get attention in the wrong ways. I was kind of a bad kid. And so when I found out I was going to the boys' home, I was like, man, screw it, another placement. Crappy people, money, all this. It's, not, it's the normal stuff, normal routine. I'm bad for the first year, year and a half. <laughs> and I think I'm being funny and I'm not, it's not getting me anywhere. It's, I'm going nothing but downhill. And I gradually start to appreciate the gifts, the lessons, the staff, they're real with you. Not in it for the money, not in it for the drama. Like, they genuinely care. Tulsa Boys Home is a, basically a huge part of where I am today. Because of them and their partners, I have loving parents. I thank them and the Tulsa Boys Home and any and every partner of the Tulsa Boys Home to get me where I am now in life. So I'm currently a senior at the Broken Arrow High School. After high school, I plan to go to college, uh, UCO or Roger State, for forensics or photography. Think about it, you never you never know what somebody can be going through. You can, we walk past thousands of people a day. You don't know what anybody's going through. It, to make a difference in a stranger's life, I mean, if you can have an impact, a good impact in somebody's life, why wouldn't you want to give it a try? My name's Cole Strickland. I'm a Tulsa Boys Home alumni. I was born in Dallas and I went to a small school with about 50 kids in my grade. And I went there all the way until I was 12. I had a great group of friends. Uh, we all kind of knew each other in our grade. And my parents decided we needed to move to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I did not want to be here. I struggled immensely to make friends in Tulsa in this huge school. I was told that I wasn't trying hard enough. I wasn't good enough. I felt very isolated um, in that I felt like I couldn't be honest with anybody. Not my parents and not my teachers. I was thinking about suicide as a 15 year old. I felt unwanted uh, at home and at school. And I, I used drugs and alcohol to pretend I wasn't there. Eventually I got kicked out of school for substance abuse and alcohol possession. Uh, and so what the Tulsa Boys Home did is it took me out of there. It took me out of my home. It took me out of school. Um, and it put me in an environment with adults that listened to me and told me that the way I was was okay. It was essentially okay that I was not okay. And so what happened at the boys' home with these adults that would listen and I could be honest uh, was that I could just be myself. The Tulsa Boys' Home changed my identity. They let me know that I had made mistakes, but that, that did not affect my value uh, as a human being. Um, and that they would care about me no matter what I did. Knowing about that value and knowing that I could be myself, it really pulled me out of the darkness uh, that I was living in before. So much of where I am today is a direct result of what I learned in the boys' home. Now I am a mechanical engineer in Chicago. You can still see the Tulsa boys' home in me 10 years later um, in the way I carry myself around the city and the way I interact with people. Um, and that I'm a confident person and I'm happy. My stepdad was very abusive. He slammed me against the walls. So I was always in fear after being assaulted by him. Um, and there were, there were times, there was a time when uh, I had a gun loaded that I'd stolen with one bullet for him underneath the pillowcase. Um, I had a pretty bad life. Growing up, it had gotten so bad where I, I even poisoned my father so that he would leave me alone. That's how much fear that I had growing up uh, in the home. It's like I was, I was always in a, in a blackness. And I was, always, I was used, so used to being numb that any time I could get free myself from that, I would take that opportunity, whether that be from burglaries or assault or um, stealing from people or drugs, that's, that's what I did. And um, I'm just so, so grateful that that's not the life I have to live anymore. And uh, the boys home helped me 
helped me in a lot of different ways to grow up in general. Do, doing the right things for the right reasons was unnatural for me. Uh, I always lived a life of, of secrecy. I think it was, it was around probably my fourth month in the boys' home that my probation officer made, gave me an assignment and she asked me to write a short-term and long-term goals list. And I never, I didn't think anything of it. I was just thinking, you know, this is dumb. I gotta do this because the PO wants me to. And, but uh, on the five-year goals, uh, one of those was to own my own car, own my own house, own my own business. And I thought nothing of it. But seven years later, I own my own home. I have three cars and I'm a manager at my own business. I, I started to come back out to the boys' home eventually and talk to the kids one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I, I would find myself throughout the day trying, trying to find any way that I could touch one of the kids' hearts. And, and just so they know that uh, they're not alone. Um, because for years I felt that way. Felt like no one cared, uh, no one will know how I, how I felt. I got to have that experience where uh, I knew how the kids felt. And so, if the uh, Tulsa Boys Home didn't exist, then uh, I, I imagine. I probably would be uh, preparing for prison, um, soon to be life sentence. The Tulsa Boys Home, I would say, taught me how to be human again, uh, to, to live a life worthy of living.